Each red dot on this chart represents a time that a news outlet said Bitcoin is dead. But despite this, the price is the highest it's ever been. And that's all thanks to game theory. So what is game theory and what's it got to do with Bitcoin? Let's mind it. Theory is a branch of mathematics and economics that studies how rational players of a game make decisions when the outcome of their choices depends on the actions of others. One of the more popular examples of game theory is The Prisoner's Dilemma, where two prisoners acting selfishly do not produce the optimal outcome. In the dilemma, each prisoner has the option to betray the other by testifying against them or to cooperate by remaining silent. If both betray, they both get a moderate sentence. If one betrays while the other remains silent, the betrayer goes free while the silent one gets a heavy sentence. But if both cooperate with each other by remaining silent, they both get a light sentence. Let's give them names. Prisoner A is Jack. Prisoner B is Mark. If Jack betrays Mark, Mark's best response is to betray, minimizing his potential loss. But if Jack remains silent and cooperates, Mark's best response is still to betray, as betraying would offer a better payoff going free, compared to cooperating and getting a light sentence. Since both prisoners reason similarly, they both end up betraying each other and getting moderate sentences. Even though mutual cooperation would have led to a better overall outcome with both prisoners only getting light sentences. This is a situation in game theory called the Nash Equilibrium, where both players in a game decide to stick to the commonly played strategy as deviating from it wouldn't be beneficial. But what has any of this got to do with Bitcoin? As it turns out, quite a lot. The game theory of Bitcoin works in its favor at many different levels. Take mining for instance. If a miner decides to deviate from the protocol and attempt to double spend, their block wouldn't be accepted by the network and they would lose the block reward despite bearing the cost of mining the block. This establishes a Nash equilibrium where the most profitable strategy for all miners is to play by the rules. The Nash Equilibrium is named after John Nash, the Nobel Prize winning mathematician considered one of the most important influences in game theory and how it relates to economics. Nash Equilibrium is present throughout Bitcoin, such as when miners are economically encouraged to add transactions with higher paying fees to their blocks by adhering to the profit-driven assumption of such an action. Rational miners make payments harder to censor and the network becomes more secure. This in time allows more people to see the network as the best long-term store of value, increasing the conviction of current Bitcoin holders and even minting new ones. There is no second best. Even at the legal level, if a country has to ban Bitcoin, then Bitcoiners and Bitcoin companies would migrate to different countries and pay tax to the new country instead strengthening the banning country's competition and weakening their own government's revenue. Since all countries reason similarly, a Nash equilibrium is reached and all countries keep Bitcoin legal without their borders to avoid missing out. Even a 51% attack where one miner controls over half of the network in an attempt to break the rules would reduce the value of the Bitcoin they were trying to steal. So why should you care? Because even those articles declaring Bitcoin is dead end up benefiting Bitcoin. If there's no good reason to attack Bitcoin to break its rules or to declare it as dead, then everyone becomes invested in its success. And when that happens, Bitcoin wins. Philosopher Nietzsche famously said, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And in Bitcoin's case, that's more true than ever. Don't miss the Prince Philip of Serbia backstage. I would love to know how you got orange pilled or what was the first thing that got you into Bitcoin? Well, I think orange pilling is, is a gradual process for a lot of people. First learned about Bitcoin in 2012 
casual conversation with a few friends saying, oh, look, Bitcoin, $35, is it going to go to $100? Yeah, whatever, we don't know. Completely ignored it back then. That was 2012. Then fast forward to 2017, one of my best friends was like, hey, have you seen this Bitcoin thing? 21 million cap, inflation hedge make some money on it I was like interesting so he taught me how to get it he told me how to store it but then I was distracted by other coins I was stacking Bitcoin but buying other other coins here and there and then but always focusing on Bitcoin but it wasn't until 2020 until the pandemic happened that I started studying more I saw things in the world that just didn't make sense and I was like realizing that maybe I should start studying Bitcoin a bit more and so I I got onto Bitcoin Twitter, I bought uh, the Bitcoin Standard and some other books, 21 Lessons and things like that. And uh, next thing I know, I'm like, this actually is incredible. This I've got the keys to a lot of the world's problems in my pocket right now. And I haven't looked back since. There was, I think one of the major turning points for me was understanding the difficulty adjustment. Because I think that's what, that's what glues all the technologies that go behind Bitcoin, is the way, that's the way it can scale up, down. And it's a bit like in the fiat world, interest rates. That's the way that, you know, with expanding and contracting economies. Well, with Bitcoin, we have something better, difficulty adjusting. And I thought that was just beautiful. Bukele making that big step, making it a legal, uh, legal tender has influence many leaders now you have yes i so i've traveled so i went to el salvador last year mm -hmm. and we also went to argentina and i'm seeing that that the bitcoin i say bitcoin crypto adoption and understanding is much much higher in, in that part of the world but what i noticed is that thanks to bukele the bukele effect uh the el salvadorian effect that it's had really positive ripple effect and other countries surrounding countries your guatemalas your uh, costa ricas and places and panamas are all talking about it and they're thinking maybe we could have something like that maybe we could uh, replicate maybe we can make it better or not so this conversation is actually happening so you're talking about doing something similar how has mass adoption in bitcoin been in serbia oh we're, look people understand the need for it mm -hmm. there's still a lot of education needed yeah. still people are very cash orientated and do you have a plan to do that uh right now it's been more of a bottom-up grassroots approach we have opened up i say we there's some very good uh serbian local bitcoiners who've opened up a uh, uh belgrade bitcoin hub and that place is a work it's a co-joined working space and it's also a place for education for people to come to learn for events and so forth and so we are, we're just spreading the word of, of, of bitcoin in the context of serbia and border eastern europe how important do you believe it is for leaders to understand the potential to adopt bitcoin it's about economic incentives it's about empowering individuals let's forget about the nation states let's forget about the top the top the top down thing people need to be empowered and people need to have to regain their individual sovereignty Otherwise, they will just look for uh, extreme, what's the word I'm looking for? They, they, they will resort to some extreme activities and they might resort to violence or whatever like that. And they'll be divided, easily divided because they, they're, they're depending too much on the, on the state to provide them with, with some sort of help. Welfare means more printing, printing more money. But instead, they can actually, we can actually uh, align economic interests with Serbs, for example, in uh, in Kosovo, and also with the Albanians in Kos uh, the Albanian Serbs in Kosovo, and they can work together with the same currency, same uh, economic incentives, and this will just will will help to just smooth down those uh, those uh, ethnic tensions. Introduce some if you just give them a met opportunity of, of something like Bitcoin, I think that will solve a lot of problems. Do you think Bitcoin and the fiat system can coexist, or one? must disappear they will have to co they're, they're trying to coexist right now i mean that's why i'm saying that that's why we have the volatility in price the volatility is not because the bitcoin's volatile it's because the fiat w world is volatile it's trying to find its price in bitcoin if you're in a bitcoin standard the world is completely calm and smooth we have a monetary policy that's lasting for for millennia we know what's going what's going how, how things are going to turn out with uh within with uh with the rate of uh, coin issuance everything's calm under a bitcoin standard so i think the key is now is to have that well bitcoin is a peaceful revolution if you call it revolution a peaceful monetary uprising